Hello, I'm Marcia Chan, and I'm back with Grammar Sense 4, Chapter 4, Modals, Part B, Form, Meaning, and Use 1. Modals of Advice, Necessity, Prohibition, and Obligation. Let's think critically about meaning and use. First, we'll read each sentence and the statements that follow it. Then we'll decide which one is the correct statement. Number 1. It's raining. We could leave now to give ourselves a few more minutes. What do you think? Is this advice polite and tentative, or is this sentence something that warns of possible bad consequences? Hmm, let's take a look at the sentence again. It's raining. We could leave now to give ourselves a few more minutes. What do you think? We could leave now. This advice is polite and tentative. It is not a demand. It is not an imperative. It's not an order. It's a suggestion. Number two, visitors must check all photographic equipment at the front desk. Does this sound informal or official? Let's look at that again. Visitors must check all photographic equipment at the front desk. This sounds very official. This is something that you would read on a sign or on some written material that tells you how to behave. This is a necessity. You're not allowed to take photographs at this place. Number three, you don't have to pay by check, but you can if you want to. Paying by check is allowed, but not required, or paying by check is not allowed. Which one is it? Let's go and read the sentence again. You don't have to pay by check, but you can if you want to. This means that paying by check is allowed. You can but not required. You don't have to. Number four, you should stay in touch with your relatives when you move out of town. Does this tell you what you are prohibited from doing or what you are expected to do? Let's review. You should stay in touch with your relatives when you move out of town. You should stay in touch. Tells you what you are expected to do. Modals of advice. Present and future. Use a modal plus a base form of the verb. For the past or perfect, use a modal plus have plus a past participle. Let's say this is your present or future context. I don't like my job. I want to quit. So your friend can answer you by giving you some advice or a suggestion. Starting from weaker modals, could and might, to stronger modals, had better and have got to. Let's take a look at these. Could and might are followed by the base form of the verb, like this. You could talk to your boss. Maybe she can help. You might talk to your boss. Maybe she can help. You could use should or shouldn't and ought or ought to. You can use should or shouldn't and ought to. For example, you shouldn't quit your job until you find another job. Stronger one is to use had better or the negative. Notice that we use had better not. We put the not after this modal. You can also use have to, have got to, and must. For example, you'd better keep your job. You had better You'd better keep your job. You need the money. You've got to keep your job. You have to keep your job. You must keep your job. Those are stronger than could or might, and still stronger than should and ought to. Now let's take a look at past context. For example, past tense, I didn't like my job, so I quit. Now let's take a look at how you could talk about this using past modals with could, have, might have, should have, ought to have, had better have, and their negatives. You could have talked to your boss instead of quitting, just like that. You could have talked to your boss, but you didn't. Stronger, you should have waited 
until you found another job. But you didn't. You quit without finding another job. You had better have found another job first. That's too bad. You probably have some regrets now that you have no job at all. Let's look at the description explanations below. Modals can be used to give advice. The choice of modal depends on the strength of a person's attitude or opinion. Present and future forms are used to give advice and opinions about a current situation. Past or perfect forms express opinions about missed opportunities or regrets about past actions. They mean that something was a good idea, but it didn't happen. Now pay, it, play, pay close, close, close attention to the fact that past modals talk about something that already happened. You cannot make a change about it, although you can still have an opinion or an attitude about the past. Weaker modals could or could have, might and might have, often sound more polite. Words such as maybe, perhaps, and I think are also sometimes used with weaker modals of advice. Had better, had better not, and had better have, and had better not have, are used to give advice with a warning of possible bad consequences if the advice isn't followed. Have to, have got to, and must are also used to give very strong advice, something the speaker thinks is necessary. Now, if you're not so sure about the past participle forms of regular and irregular verbs, Please go to the back of your book and look at pages A8 and A9. Modals of necessity modal plus base form of the verb. Let's compare present or future necessity with past necessity. In the present or future, you must pay before entering the park. That's the rule. It's necessary. You may not go inside the park until after you pay. You must pay before entering the park. Past necessity. You had to pay. Notice, do not use the word must. Use had to. You had to pay before entering the park. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, I had left my wallet at home. Shucks. I couldn't go into the park. Another example. He has to be at the meeting by 10 o'clock, so he's got to take a taxi. Has to be, has got to be, must be, all have the same force. So he's got to take, he has to take, he must take a taxi. The word must is more formal. The words has to be and has got to be are more used in oral speech, spoken English, but they all have the same force of necessity. In the past, he had to be at the meeting by 10 o'clock, so he had to take a taxi. Notice there is only one past tense form for past necessity. Modals can be used to talk about necessity or something that's required. Must expresses the strongest necessity and is used in formal or official situations, often to talk about laws or rules. Have to is used in formal or informal situations, and have got to is more informal. Only had to. Only had to. Remember that. Only had to is used. Only had to is used to express past necessity. Notice that unlike past modals of advice, had to does not express regret. No regret. She had to quit her job. Why? Because it was driving her crazy. 
have to and have got to change form to show agreement in the present and the future. Have to, I have to, we have to, you have to, they have to. Uh, how about she, he, and it? It has to, she has to, he has to. Third person singular, has to, changes from have to to has to. You'll remember that, right? Subject, verb, agreement. Modals of prohibition and lack of necessity. Modal plus the base form of the verb. Let's compare present and future prohibition with past prohibition. You must not bring anything into the exam room. That is, you're going into the exam room, but before you go, put everything away. You must not bring anything into the exam room. That's a present situation or future situation. You must not bring anything into the exam room right now. You must not bring anything into the exam room Two minutes from now, you must not bring anything into the exam room. Two weeks from now, present and future. If you're talking about a past situation, you can say, I couldn't bring anything into the exam room. I couldn't bring past ability. This is prohibited. I couldn't bring anything into the exam room. That's definitely in the past. You may not use the gym equipment. You may not use the gym equipment. You are not permitted to use it. You are not allowed to use the gym equipment. Not now and not in the future. How about the past? The past, I couldn't use the gym equipment. I could not use the gym equipment. Notice we don't use the word may. We use the word could not to express past prohibition. Another example of present or future prohibition, you can't eat on the subway. You cannot eat on the subway. It is prohibited. It's against the rule. Past prohibition. I rode the subway and I was surprised. Past tense was. I was surprised that you couldn't eat on the subway. Couldn't. Past tense of can't. Now let's go to present and future lack of necessity. This has a different meaning. She doesn't have to go to work tomorrow. Why not? It's a holiday. She does not have to go. It is not necessary to go. There is a lack of necessity about her going to work tomorrow. She doesn't have to go to work now. She doesn't have to go to work in two minutes. She doesn't have to go to work tomorrow. She doesn't have to go to work next Saturday. Present or future lack of necessity. Past lack of necessity. She didn't. Here's the simple past. Didn't. She didn't have to go to work yesterday. It was not required. It was not necessary. She didn't have to go to work yesterday, but she went anyway. So even though she didn't have to go to work, she went to work. She didn't have to go means it was not required. So pay attention to the difference between prohibition and the lack of necessity. These modals are different and you must pay attention to them in order to give the correct meaning when you speak and when you write. Let's go over that again. Prohibition. Use must not, may not, and cannot. These are indicated these are used to indicate that something is prohibited, something is not allowed. Must not is quite strong, and it's used in formal situations. May not is formal, but not quite as strong. Can't and cannot are used in both formal and informal situations. So these are used for present and future prohibition. But how about past prohibition? Only could it is used. Only couldn't be used to express past prohibition. You know that modals have more than one meaning, right? So you have to learn the meanings of the different modals and make sure that you use them correctly when you speak and write. Cannot or can't, cannot and can't, these, the contraction or the full form, either one, 
This is used, also used to give very strong advice, something the speaker wants to prohibit. You can't quit your job. You need it. You cannot smoke in here. It's a hospital. All right, so that can be used also to express some very strong advice. Now, remember, prohibition is different from lack of necessity. Prohibition and lack of necessity are expressed using different modals. Don't have to means that something's not necessary. There's a choice of whether to do it or not. Don't have to, and remember, third person singular used doesn't have to. I don't have to, you don't have to, we don't have to, they don't have to. He doesn't have to, she doesn't have to, it doesn't have to. Subject, verb, agreement. Pay attention to that when you are speaking and writing in the present or future time frame. In the past, it's easy because you only have one choice, and that is didn't, didn't have to. So didn't have to means that something was unnecessary, whether or not it happened. Modals of obligation. Modal plus the base form of the verb. Here's an example of present or future obligation. I am supposed to cook, or the contraction, I'm supposed to cook dinner tonight. I'm supposed to cook dinner tonight. It's my turn. Past obligation, I was supposed to cook dinner last night, but I had to stay late at work. So, I didn't cook dinner. Somebody else cooked dinner, or nobody cooked dinner. But in any case, I didn't do it. I was supposed to. That was my obligation. But something else happened. Notice that in the past, when we say was supposed to, it often indicates a past obligation that wasn't fulfilled. Second example using should, or the negative shouldn't. You shouldn't eat on the bus, but a lot of people do. You shouldn't eat on the bus, but a lot of people do. That expresses an idea or an opinion in the present or future time frame. How about in the past? In this case, you use the past of B. In this case, you use the past of B, was or were, or the negative, wasn't or weren't, plus supposed to. You weren't supposed to eat on the bus, but I did. I hadn't eaten all day, and I was very hungry. You weren't supposed to eat on the bus. In contrast, I ate on the bus. You weren't supposed to eat on the bus. So that shows past obligation. Look at the note. Present or future obligation, should or shouldn't, and be or negative be not, is not, am not, are not, supposed to, are used to express present or future obligation when we feel we are expected to do something. But we may or may not do it. For example, if I say I'm supposed to cook tonight, it's not clear whether I'm actually going to cook or not. But I know that is the expectation. Past obligation only was or were, plus a negative not, supposed to, is used to express past obligation. It means that something was expected, but it didn't happen. I wasn't supposed to come last night, I wasn't expected to, but I came up, I came, I showed up. I was expected to go with you, but I got sick, so I couldn't go. 